Wow. Uh, so I think I'm between you guys in the break. And certainly after hearing that introduction, I'm a little exhausted. Um, so uh, but certainly appreciate you all hanging in there and uh, taking the time to uh, to listen to what we're going to talk about today. Um, so, uh, you know, Juniper, our primary business is in high performance networking. Um, so obviously, uh, a lot of what we've been thinking about with regards to how the Internet of Things is going to evolve is about uh, what the requirements are going to be with uh, the network itself. Um, but in addition to that, you know, uh, we've been putting a lot of thought into the importance of the edge cloud. Um, and you know whether that's edge computing or edge cloud, the notion of essentially distributing the edge closer to the point where um, the things are actually communicating um, such that you can actually take advantage of that data as, as similar to what our previous speaker was just talking about. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that uh, today. Um, you know, just given the fact that we are going into the break, uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible and, um, and see if I can, uh, you know, make it uh, a fairly concise for you. But that just gives you a little bit of context of what we're really trying to do. Um, so the way that we think about it, and it sounds like you know, many of our peers in, in the, the market think about it in a very similar way, is that um, IoT really is about data, right? It's, it's fundamentally about you know, the fact that we're going from a physical world and being able to digitize you know, what's going on in the physical world. So we're going through a large A to D conversion activity. Um, and you know, that's rapidly accelerating, right? I mean, you know, the, the numbers say something like six billion devices being connected today, uh, expanding by a factor of three or four over the next couple of years to 20 billion different devices. What's pretty staggering, and, and actually, um, I didn't really know that much about this particular statistic until uh, we were preparing for this discussion. Um, and it's a little different than what our previous speaker was actually talking about, is just the massive amount of data that will be generated um, as a result of moving in this direction. Um, so, you know, a, a yottabyte, which I actually didn't know what a yottabyte was, um, is a pretty massive amount of data um, that can be generated by these devices. Um, to give you a sense of what you know, this is really talking about. So uh, I had to look this up because I needed some sort of way of putting this into my own head. Um, a yottabyte, uh, a single yottabyte of data, which is, uh, you know, 10 to the 24 bytes, um, roughly corresponds to um, if you were to take uh, all of the data uh, that, you know, let's say the NSA wants to process and you wanted to put that into a single data center, it would roughly equate to a data center the size of like Delaware, right? So we're talking about just massive amounts of data are going to be generated by um, something on the scale of, of these, uh, these IoT devices. Now that doesn't mean all of that data is actually going to be captured and processed. Um, uh, you know, some subset of that will be captured and processed, but even then we're still talking about relatively significant amounts of data um, that are going to be generated from these devices. And what that really sort of points to, and I think it was, uh, you know, uh, part of the thesis of the previous previous uh, presenter's conversation is that it's not possible for all of that to be, uh, all of that data to be backhauled to some large central cloud, um, a bunch of applications that are running in a scale out architecture and effectively make use of that data. Because as he pointed out, you want to be able to act on that data. You want to be able to extract context from that data. You want to be able to, um, not only that, but um, cost effectively uh, uh, be able to get access to that data. And you can't really do that if everything is done centrally. And so, you know, our view is that, you know, increasingly that means that more and more of the data from these devices is going to be processed at the edge, right? And so, um, you know, that's going to be a, a trend that's going to pick up uh, certainly over time. Um, along the lines of that, you know, the, the whole notion of the edge is really about, um, uh, you know, as I said, it's how do you push computing um, and really the applications closer to the point where the data is being created. Um, you know, if, if we are talking about that type of data creation, really then the notion of edge computing becomes a critical enabler of how IoT will really scale, 
right? Meaning if you, if you want it to only sort of remain in the domain of, of very limited use cases, um, uh, you know, then edge computing is probably a less important component of it. But if we're really going to um, enable the entire physical world uh, to communicate us, with us with some form of digital data such that we can use things like AI, we can use um, automation type algorithms to better enhance and control the environment around us, then we're going to need edge computing. Um, it's not just about the data, but there's other critical things that are really important that are driving um, these trends towards moving compute uh, further out to the edge. You know, the one that we talk about a lot, we talk about a lot inside Juniper, the ones that a lot of our customers talk about a lot, is uh, just latency, right? You know, and I'll, I have a slide later where we'll talk a little bit about this, that, um, you know, the, the further away the application is, actually, and within the environment um, that the application is deployed, right? You know, if you're using sort of traditional data center architectures that are not really built for <laughs> event-driven processing, are not really built for um, handling sort of lightweight, low latency type applications, then it just it, it extends the, uh, the time period between when the data is actually created and when somebody generates an insight and can do something with that. Um, the other is really about availability, right? Um, the, with computing going out into the edge, you have the ability to have a smaller subset of devices communicating with the application if the network goes down or if a node goes down within the overall edge cloud, then overall the, the system is relatively uh, resilient, much in the way we build the internet and networks today. It, it's, it resembles that same characteristic such that you know, the majority of the system can continue to operate um, for an extended period of time and then when everything comes back online it can re-equilibrate. Um, you know, the, the data piece is, is also a function of cost. Um, you know, and by not having to push all the data um, up to a central point, we are significantly reducing um, the cost of both uh, transport as well as storage, um, which makes this a much more effective way of, of getting these use cases up and scaled. Um, and then, of course, by going to uh, the, where the compute is actually getting closer to the devices, we can actually offload more of the functionality from the devices themselves, which then gives us the ability to deploy simpler devices that are, are more power efficient and actually can run on batteries for longer periods of time. The last and the most important piece, and I think there has been some conversations here at the conference about security, is the, the more we're able to push uh, you know, the, the functionality into the edge, the, the, the stronger the security is that we can actually apply. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but essentially the idea is you know, if devices themselves are relatively small, are, if they're relatively uh, uh, you know, uh, lightweight with regards to their compute functionality, their ability individually to uh, you know, uh, manage their own security is going to be somewhat limited. But if we can build that more into uh, edge platforms that are actually close to those devices, and again, a relatively small amount of those devices, then we can apply more of the technology that's generally available um, for um, you know, managing encrypting traffic, policy-based encryption, and so forth. We have the ability to do more um, inspection and make sure that there hasn't been any sort of compromise of any of the devices. And of course, we can provide a lot more robust authentication type capabilities as well. If you have questions along the way, feel free to jump in. Certainly will make it a lot more interesting for me if you all do. Um, but uh, otherwise, I will just keep rattling on. Um, so uh, our vision of the way that this actually looks is not just edge compute. Um, certainly edge compute is, is a, a key building block of this, but rather it's actually the notion of an edge cloud, right? And our vision of the edge cloud is what we consider to be a virtual distributed platform. Um, and one of the key aspects of this is that um, that really distinguishes the notion of an edge cloud from edge compute is you're really not just talking about putting compute and storage closer to the sensors, but instead you're looking at, you may have compute storage networking capabilities that are deployed um, on the premise, you know, close to the sensors, um, including like say a vehicle, you could actually be deployed in the vehicle itself. 
you could be deployed in a near location, right? So, you know, for example, if, if it's on an industrial site, you may actually be close to the individual sensors, right, for things like protocol conversion, um, and then some uh, minimal uh, data analysis and filtering, but then you may have some sort of gateway device that actually is managing a wide variety of applications before you go and exit out to um, uh, you know, to uh, additional calculations you might want to do in the cloud. Um, there's, there's going to be an enhancement of uh, points of presence uh, based clouds, right? And this could be, you know, in, uh, you know, places like central offices run by service providers. This could be in um, exchange points run by companies like Equinix, um, or it could just be in hosted sites managed by individual enterprises themselves. Um, and then um, lastly, you know, those clouds would actually exist in centralized data centers and or in the public cloud. And the idea is that there should be a way of seamlessly deploying applications, um, whether, you know, the application is replicated or components of that application are actually distributed that are orchestrated across each one of those nodes in the distributed edge cloud by a single pane of glass management that has full visibility to uh, telemetry coming from each one of those nodes, both at the infrastructure layer as well as at the application layer, um, and then is dynamically provisioning those resources in order to respond to the needs of uh, the, the uh, uh, let's say, the, the sensors and or the applications that are being deployed, okay? And that gives you uh, really a, uh, a set of functionality that responds to a wide variety of different use cases. It also allows you to take advantage of um, the fact that um, in uh, certain types of situations, you may want to have um, uh, not necessarily near field presence um, relative to the sensors, but you may want to have more of an aggregation type um, solution in order for you to better optimize the use of your resources. Um, actually, uh, part of what I also wanted to, you know, point out is, you know, one of the long-term objectives of moving down the path towards IoT is that you get autonomous behavior, right? Meaning that less and less of uh, what would actually be uh, done in terms of responding to the data would be done by human interaction. Instead, it would be taken by the machines directly themselves. And there's a whole category of use cases sort of in this blue area over here that really can only truly be enabled once we get to autonomous behavior. Now, the, the thing is, if you really think about that, um, you can't expect the networks to always be truly reliable to the point where you could assume that you're going to be able to run um, connected cars autonomously based on a network, right? So the notion of having a portion of the compute um, sit on the car itself, process what's going on, being able to dynamically interact with other nodes within the, the edge cloud to, to pull down information and data, and then be able to process that both in terms of where you are in space as well as what your connectivity is, is really a key portion of this um, going forward. And in order to enable that, you really do have to uh, you know, build a denser distributed system that allows you to mitigate latency impacts and network delays. Um, let's see, so um, a couple of things I I just wanted to talk about uh, with regards to um, the architecture side. You know, this is a, a very general purpose looking architecture uh, stack, um, but there are multiple elements that are important relative to creating an edge cloud architecture that we wanted to highlight. Um, actually, the one thing I did want to point out before I started is, um, you know, the way that we think about this and along the lines of just a lot of the discussion we've been having is, the, the, what an edge cloud actually looks like is sort of the happy marriage of a large distributed system and what a cloud, you know, being built today would look like. So cloud native, you know, scale out based architecture, um, try to leverage full abstraction capabilities, um, um, you know, both at the application layer, at the data layer, multi-tenancy, um, that you, you know, you really have all of those characteristics but then a large distributed system, right? Um, you know, resiliency, the ability to do failover very effectively, um, things like, you know, store and forward um, and so forth. Um, 
At the management level, I think I already mentioned the notion of the importance of a single pane of glass of management um, and also the ability to do monitoring across all the nodes. That's really key. Um, you know, the previous speaker talked about leveraging machine learning and, and artificial intelligence based algorithms to really understand the data. Um, the other way to think about the importance of ML and AI is actually in managing the system itself. Right? Um, this is going to become an increasingly complex system and doing manual configuration, manual monitoring, optimization um, is going to give way to AI based approaches of self healing, self optimization, um, you know, self organization to some degree as well. One thing to keep in mind, and I'll talk about it at the network layer, is you know, most of the nodes that are going to be in this large distributed system are going to be talking to each other at some level. And so when something goes down, they need to be able to respond to that very effectively. And that's not something that you're going to be handling through uh, operator alerts. You know, on the application tier, I already talked about cloud native application development. Um, you know, I think one of the really interesting things that's happening now, we're not obviously in the application space, but there's a lot of folks that are working on creating very, you know, uh, lightweight application stacks that can work in a variety of different compute environments, um, very low power uh, type environments. And I think this is increasingly what we're going to see. One of the key things is the application has to be abstracted from the physical layer, um, not just the underlying compute and storage stack, but it has to be abstracted in terms of like, what is it that the network's actually doing as well, right? You know, if, if the, you know, the, the classic example here is if you're dealing with a, a device that's communicating that's mobile and in, as a result of it being mobile, it's changing um, its location, it may be changing its IP address, you don't want the application to break. Right? And so you need to create these types of abstractions such that you know, um, the application is ro you know, robust and understands what's happening with regards to the device. And then of course zero touch provisioning. Right? The only way that this really works very effectively is if you can deploy the application and have it set up and run um, very effectively on its own. If, again, if you have to send out truck rolls of people in order to make this work, it's not going to be very cost effective. On the data side, um, you know, one of the big things about um, the edge cloud edge computing is data reduction, right? Um, data du duplication, deduplication, data reduction. Um, as uh, the previous speaker said, you know, removing, um, you know, uh, the raw data, getting down to the context so that you can actually decide what more you need to do with that fairly quickly but also the ability to handle multi-tenancy um, both for um, sample data as well as streaming data. Um, that's a big part of what the data architecture needs to be able to do as well. And um, by multi-tenancy, what we're referring to is you may want to run multiple analytics type applications on the same data. So you need to make sure that you can make that data available and not tightly couple the application and the data. And then of course, you know, as many of us are dealing with here this week, um, GDPR is going into effect, data sovereignty. And so dealing with these types of architectures is going to be increasingly complex in that regard as well. On the platform, um, composable infrastructure is a big part of, I think, where we're going. Um, you know, I certainly with, you know, solutions um, like serverless, um, Lambda, um, AWS Greengrass, that was kind of the initial idea. I think there's a next generation of composable infrastructure that's starting to um, uh, become more interesting and more prevalent. Um, companies like HT Base, for example, um, are doing some very interesting stuff in this, in this regard. Um, and certainly that's where we see people making more progress towards the notion of, of self-healing um, distributed nodes. Security, um, you know, this is where it gets very, very complex. Um, certainly being able to handle a wide variety of different types of devices, um, being able to understand both the device and the application, being able to match those, authenticate, um, role-based access controls, um, and also be able to handle that, that mobility issue I mentioned before is pretty important. End-to-end uh, -end, um, uh, encryption, um, you know, being able to do that in terms of uh, defense and depth, um, and then of course being able to do inspection and, and uh, threat detection um, such that you have real secure uh, policy um, enforcement is key. 
Finally, on the network layer, this is you know, the place that we tend to participate the most. Um, this is really about how do you deploy a true software-defined network as a service um, that allows you to uh, create this um, uh, more of a mesh network that uh, connects together each one of these different nodes. With, and you have to, the reason I noted a network as a service is this is truly uh, something that has to be abstracted from the edge cloud itself. Meaning um, that, you know, in, if you're trying to have nodes communicate to other nodes, one of the things that's going to stymie them in the way we build architectures today is that, you know, if it tries to, you know, if you try to communicate across different, um, you know, uh, network address translators, if you're trying to communicate across firewalls, if you're trying to um, communicate, um, you know, through different VLANs and so forth, you know, obviously that's going to create a lot of difficulty. And you can't sort of be continuously trying to restitch networks together. And so this is going to force us to go down the path towards creating a different paradigm around um, uh, overlay-based networks that we could dynamically deploy based on the application that's being put in place. Um, of course, a big part of that is going to be making sure that the, the network itself is very policy driven. Um, and that will include not only the security side but all, and the access side, but also in terms of the services that would be deployed, including encryption and uh, things like compression. Okay. Um, so from an architectural point of view, I did want to sort of make the case for the IoT gateway. Um, you know, I think the IoT gateway sort of gets, it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild of, of uh, the IoT discussion. A lot of times people will talk about it in such a way that, you know, well, if you have to um, use an IoT gateway, but God help us if we actually do. Um, I actually think that's the wrong way to think about this for the exact reasons we were just talking about um, from an architectural perspective in that the gateway really creates some significant benefits. The first being that it allows you to fully abstract the OT from the applications themselves, right? Without really going through a massive redesign of the way sensors work today or the way networks work. It, it sort of is the bridge between them um, in terms of things like protocol conversion, um, access and segmentation, and so forth. Um, the second thing is, is that um, gateways are, you know, while traditional gateways may have been more of a, an appliance, um, the, the current generation of gateways, including what we're actually showing in our booth, is really geared around being software defined and flexible, right? So, you know, they, they're designed for zero touch activation, they're designed for being deployed, um, you know, in a variety of footprints, including increasingly in very small footprints like, you know, Raspberry Pis and their variants. And I think that's going to allow us to be much more flexible with regards to how do we bring compute closer to the edge. And then finally, on the edge computing itself, obviously that allows us, uh, you know, like I said, to uh, distribute closer to where we actually need it. You know, just given the fact that we are uh, running into the break, I'm just going to flash up a couple of quick use cases, um, and then I'm largely going to just try to refer you to our booth so you can go actually see what we're doing there. Um, just a couple of things that we've been working on. So one is the Mobile Edge Cloud for Connected Vehicle, um, working with one of our service provider partners in Europe. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of it, but essentially the idea is that, you know, in this case, you know, we're pushing the compute very close to the edge. We're dealing with, you know, as part of the compute, how do you actually, um, uh, you know, being in the mobile network actually has its own set of requirements um, with regards to things like, you know, how do you manage uh, policies, how do you manage um, tunneling and so forth. And you have to be very aware of what's happening on the radios themselves. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't really be able to manage things like latency. And then the other use case, and I think this is the one where actually we have a demo of directly in the booth, is really like the smart building type application, um, you know, where we have um, the Wi-Fi device, we have, you know, sort of a set of sensors, a set of recording devices, essentially being enabled and tied together with a gateway that's performing edge compute um, such that uh, using AWS Greengrass and Lambda actually um, that's tying directly into, uh, you know, an AWS instance running back in the cloud as well. 
I'm going to just stop here. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you giving me the time to talk. I hope you enjoyed, you know, me sort of discussing some of the ideas that we have specifically about um, how edge clouds are going to be built, how they're going to be enabled, and some of the challenges that are associated with that. And if you have any other questions, I'd certainly be happy to take them.